Hey there, this is Abel, the Controls Freak, coming at you in another YouTube video. And as you can see, I uh, spruced up the place a little bit for you. Uh, over the holidays, I've been playing around with the logos and some colors, and uh, also got a few Amazon gift cards I put to good use and bought me a uh, graphics tablet. So in this video here, I'm going to be using that tablet, and uh, hopefully we'll put it to good use here. Uh, this video is going to be about preventing leak by on your dampers, which uh, essentially means you got to be torquing down on those damper shafts. And I'm going to show you a quick and easy tip uh, to be able to do that uh, when you're mounting your uh, damper actuators, uh, such as Belimo in the case that uh, we'll be using today. So let's go on to the next slide here. So the question is, which is more important, fully open or fully closed? And the answer to that question would actually be fully closed. Uh, most engineers and uh, commissioning agents and so forth, they're going to look for zero leak by on those dampers, uh, whether it's on an air handler or a VAB box. They're not too concerned about uh, whether they're getting the maximum airflow when the damper is fully open. I'm going to show you why. Uh, there's a few books that I've been putting up on uh, the Controls Freak website uh, that you can take a look at that have some graphs similar to this and go into a little bit more detail than what we're going to show right here. Uh, but essentially this is going to be a graph based on uh, 0 to 100 percent of your damper position and we're also going to go 0 to 100 percent on your flow and what you'll see on those graphs um, is that at around the magic numbers of 20 and 80 of the damper position you're going to get uh, a slight curve that isn't linear based on uh, probably around this range here 10 to 90 uh, and what that that you know line is going to look like is something like a slow opening to 20%, and then all of a sudden it's going to jump up, go up to about 90% of your airflow at 80, and then curve back off. Uh, and so just to give it a little bit more definition here, let's uh, draw some lines here. That's going to be your 100%, and that's going to be 100%. Um, and down here on the slow side, you've got your 20%, which is actually going to be about 10% of your complete flow. So what we're trying to say here is uh, when you start to open that damper from 0% to 20%, you're going to be a very minimal, slow amount of airflow actually coming through that damper. Even though you've moved it 20%, you're really only going to see about 10% of the total airflow from the damper being wide open. Okay. Now, why this is important is that if you don't get it zero shut, you're going to get leak by. And a little bit of leak by, especially on a VAV box, if you get 50 CFM or 100 CFM, that's going to actually show up on test and balance reports. So it's really important to make sure that you get them completely closed. Uh, just to give a little bit more information here, let's go one more step and say that, let's say that VAV box uh, that we're dealing with has uh, 3,000 CFM. And that is the uh, maximum amount of airflow that's capable of going through the box. So if that damper is completely at 100% wide open, that's how much airflow is going to flow through that box, 3,000 CFM at one inch of static. Uh, but even though the box can do 3,000, the uh, engineers and the mechanical contractors and so forth, they work together to, to specify uh, a, a larger box than what they really need. So really this box only needs to put out, let's say, 2,400 CFM. Okay, now the difference there is about 600 CFM. Um, that's a difference, looking at uh, these two numbers here, uh, you'll see that that is about 20%. Okay, so just by looking at those two numbers here, you can actually see that you don't need to make the damper go to 100%, which is just a complete flat damper with them you know, being wide open like that with the air going across there like that. You don't need them to be 100% to get the 2400 CFM that's rated by the engineer or that's designed. This is your design flow. Um, so really, to get the 2400, you're talking about something like, let's say, right here. At your 80% mark, you're actually going to see your 2400 CFM. And at that 80%, uh, you might be somewhere around here in the 90s or so forth. But this is an example of saying that it's not so important that your damper be at the maximum airflow here uh, when it's at the 100% mark. Uh, what's really important, though, is that when that damper is told with the actuator to be 0%, uh, definitely you need to have zero airflow with no leak by. All right, let's go to the next slide real quick.
Alright, aligning the damper shaft with the actuator. We're going to make this quick. Here's the tip. Alright, uh, when you go in to put in uh, the actuator and you slide the actuator and you're going to have your shaft here, uh, and it's usually going to have a mark, make sure you crank that sucker down uh, to the shut position, which is going to be vertical in this case because you have airflow going that direction. Um, so you want to crank that down shut by using some channel locks or your hands. Uh, and then what you want to do is slide your actuator on there and leave the bolts here uh, loose. Okay, You want to leave those loose. And what you want to use is the clutch. And there's your clutch there. When you push on that clutch, that's going to free up this part of the actuator right here. Now this actuator is going to be mounted and there'll be like a little screw here that's going to nail that sucker down. And the actuator body is not going to move. But this turning buckle here with the U-bolt is going to turn. And what we're going to try to do is make this go to 0% shut. Uh, by using that clutch it's going to free spin so we'll make it go to zero now this is all assuming you have no power on the actuator and there's no control system in place and what you're going to do is is then crank it back the other direction and this seems a little strange but go ahead and crank it back the other direction going that way about five percent okay um, if you do have a control system and it is powered up, well, you can manually uh, set inside the control system to, to be 5% and this motor will drive just 5% open exactly. Uh, but if not, just guesstimate, just give it a little nick. You know, if this is your zero point right here, maybe you're going to give it a little tick like about like that. That'd be good enough. And what you're going to do at that point is then crank down on your U-bolts at that point. And you're going to grip that shaft real secure when it's not exactly shut. And the reason why is because once you put that in automatic and the uh, actuator actually gets a signal here of, say, 0 volts DC um, and then drives to 0%, it's going to turn the U-bolt going back this direction to try to make 0%. And in effect, that's going to torque down that shaft just a little bit more. Therefore, you're ensuring that you're closing that damper to 0% and there's not going to be any leak by, or at least you're, you're you know, doing the steps to make sure to prevent that, right? And that's my little tip. Um, pretty simple, guys. Um, but hopefully that'll help you out next time you're out on the job site and, or you got some subcontractors maybe or someone else is doing the work for you. Great little tip to do when you're doing some installation. Doesn't take much to do uh, to get it done right. So there you are. Uh, this is Abel with the Controls Freak. And uh, guys, don't forget to stop by the uh, controlsfreak.com blog and uh, leave some comments for me. I'd like to hear what you guys think, uh, see how I can make things better, or maybe if I missed something or said something wrong, hey, correct me. I I'm not infallible. Let me know. All right, guys. We'll see you later. See you in the next video.